My name is Nate, and I am one of the core LibGDX developers. In this video, I'll be showing the particle editor and how it's used. So when you run it, it has a preview area in the upper left, emitter properties on the right. Um, these properties at the top we don't care about too much, so there's an invisible handle here. You can mostly get rid of them. There's other invisible handles going this way this way. So uh, the there are many controls on the right and it's all very confusing. Um, you need to play with them to figure out what they do. Um, for now I'll de deactivate velocity so we have a particle starts at size 32. I'll set the max particles to 1 so it's easier to see. So the controls use little charts which are very powerful um, once you understand what they do. The chart can be expanded with the plus button. Um, you can add points to it. So this chart is a life chart. That means that the x axis is the life of the particle and the y axis is the scale of the size. So this is saying that the size will be 100% for the life of the particle. If we click, we add a point. Double click to get rid of it. So we can make a chart that looks like this. You see that the particle starts at 100% size, goes to zero. So 100% size is 32, that's the top of the chart. The low value is zero, that's the bottom of the chart. We can make that bigger. So now we get a particle goes from 132 to zero. It doesn't have to be zero, it could be something like 30. You aren't limited to two points in the chart. You can create as many as you want. Maybe it stays at 100% until the very end. Quickly goes to zero. You can create uh, all kinds of effects with the charts. So there's a little button next to the high and low values that allows you to choose a range, say 32 to 100. So the starting value, at the, the value at the top of the chart will, will be for a particle when it's spawned, it will choose a value between 32 and 100. So you get different size particles each time. And you can do that for the bottom of the chart as well. Next we will activate velocity, so that gives you particles that move, and angle, that controls the emission angle of the particles. Obviously higher velocity will give you particles that move much faster. Um, velocity can, can be controlled the same way, using the chart. Say we want the velocity to go to zero after some time, so then we can make a really fast particle that goes and then stops. It's easier to see the, how the controls change the particles when there's only one. If we go back and add many, the effect is much more interesting, but it's harder to see what the control is doing. Next we'll talk about tint. That's the color of the particle. This is just white. So this little handle is selected because it has a white line here and that means we can change it, that will change the color. You can click and that will add another handle and you can change that color. Now it will go from red to, to orange, yellow. You can, you can add as many of those handles as you want and the colors can be you know, red and then blue and then yellow, as many as you want. Double click the handles to get rid of them you must have at least one handle, of course. Transparency is separate from tint. That is the alpha value of the color. So this is showing alpha value of zero, scales to 100, over 20% of the life, stays that way until 80% of the life, then scales to zero. You can make it scale sooner. You can 
add points control it with the chart just like any other property the last thing I think I'll talk about is the controls at the top so first duration that is how long your effect will last so if you have an explosion it'll last in this example three, three seconds the percentage shown here is how much of the duration once it hits 100% it waits for all particles to die and then it restarts the effect count this is how many particles can be alive at any one time maximum minimum it will spawn a particle if there's not that many particles so if we say five there will always be five particles and you see they're all spawn at the same time if min is less than max so if we say zero and 100 then the the control over how many particles are emitted is emission that is particles emitted per second so that's 10 particles per second and each particle the life is how long the particle will live in milliseconds so this is emitting 10 particles per second they each live for one second so you see our count of particles is 10 until we hit 100 percent duration and then it allows the particles to die start spawning new ones so if you want a lot of so even though we have a max of 100 there's only 10 particles at a time so we can change the emission to say 50 particles per second when the particle when it restarts you will get a much more interesting effect of course that's a lot of particles to blend but it's not actually very many particles to blend 50 maybe on android but not on desktop for sure so that's a pretty neat effect you can click in here um, drag it around see what your emitter looks like while it's moving we'll put it back to 10 though because you probably want a small number when creating effects for Android. So let's make an effect that's more interesting than this. At the top there's an open button that allows you to specify an image. Um, the images that you use for particles can produce some surprising effects with even some strange looking images. So this is a sort of fiery looking image um, with the settings that we have that doesn't look like a very interesting effect but that's easy to change. Um, we can change the size. Uh, instead of changing the number with the little clickers or by typing it in, we can just drag the chart. Um, same with velocity, much less velocity than that, so that the particles overlap more. I guess we'll create some sort of little explosion. So a control we haven't talked about is rotation. If we make that active, um, our particles will rotate. So this is saying the low value will be between 1 and 360. It will randomly choose a value between those. This little guy can collapse that. If it's collapsed, then the low value will always be 1. If it's expanded, you will have a range. Um, we'll make it more interesting and say that we'll start at a rotation between negative and positive 360. Um, real quick, I'll put the max particles back to 1 so we can see what's going on. Change the transparency as well. So this relative checkbox, this says that whatever the start angle, um, when the particle is spawned, change that relative to that start angle. So if we uncheck this and we set this to, to 90, this will rotate 90 degrees from 90 to 180, always. If we check relative, then it will rotate 180 degrees starting at 90. So this will start at a random, random, uh, We'll just 0 to 360, and then we'll rotate either negative or positive 180. That's more interesting when we have more particles because they will all go different directions 
and you will get a kind of pulsing effect. So that looks like an okay fireball. Um, the next thing we can do over here, you have a list of emitters. You can double click to name them. Call that fire. If we create a new one, we'll call this ball. Um, whichever one is selected here, the controls on the right will reflect that, that emitter. Um, you can uncheck emitters so that you can deal with one at a time. So for this one, I'll go ahead and use the default white ball, but uh, I will make the duration a lot smaller so it will only emit for 100 milliseconds. And I only want, say, three particles. Change the emission to be higher so that all three particles get emitted in that 100 milliseconds. And then the velocity, I think I'll I make the velocity very small, so they just barely move. Make it much bigger. Not that big. Straighten this out. And then change the transparency. So if you look at just the fire, you'll see that it's being blended additively. So if you uncheck this. You, you get uh, the images drawn on top of each other but not blended together and it's usually not as interesting. So when we put this ball on top of the fire, the idea is that it will make the fire glow where the ball is. So we need to make the ball last for as long as the fire. So the center of the fire is glowing because of that ball. If you look at just the ball, you can see what's going on. Then uh, you might add another emitter for smoke, for example. So grab an image like that, maybe one like that. Do it quickly, make it, make it real big. of them, so we'll put three, change the velocity to be much lower, that's all right. So again, we'll change the duration to 100 milliseconds, change the emission to be high, so at the beginning it creates three of them, and we'll say it lasts for four seconds, so it'll last longer than the fire now. should look more like smoke, so it needs to be much more transparent. So we don't want the smoke to start at the same time as the fire, because that doesn't make much sense. So if we add delay, that will make the smoke not start for one second. And yeah, there's an effect. You can keep playing with it. There's some other controls that I haven't shown that are useful. Um, wind, gravity, and a spawn shape. But I think that's good for now. You can get really far with this. Once you're done, you take your effect, you save it, it gives you a file. In code, you load that file, show it in your game. You don't have to do much in the code. It's all done in the editor. So hopefully that was useful. Um, yeah, good luck.